Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Judy and you are watching Running So and So. And wow, I'm blown away. That's the only thing I can say. You lovely people out there, you have watched my last vlog in abundance. And welcome aboard if you are a new subscriber. I've gone over a little mini milestone of 3,400 subscribers. Please excuse me. And that has just completely blown me away. I feel so very, very humble that so many of you have chosen to watch my knitting and stitching show vlog. So if you've watched it, if you've commented, thank you so much. And thank you for your comments on my last Friday sews which rather got overshadowed by the knitting and stitching show but this week now this vlog is going to have lots of editing out because i have got some kind of horrendous cough um i felt a little bit depleted in energy this week and consequently i haven't done any sewing i washed my fabric from my trudy turtleneck it's washed I've got the pattern here as well. In fact, oh look, it goes one better. That's the pattern. I've even got it out. I got it out to cut it out and then decided, I'm just making certain it is the right one, that I'd absolutely, I just needed to stop. Um, I had a pretty rough Monday and Tuesday with coughing and then Oh, you don't want to know about it. It was just one of those weeks. You know what it's like. You get a cold, you start coughing, you start snivelling. One of those things. And hence the reason I haven't really done as much sewing this week as I would like to have done. Um, but, no more ums and buts. I have, yesterday when I was starting to feel a little bit brighter, I decided that I would defrost the freezer. As we do. So in between defrosting the freezer... I had a really good go at the advent calendars, which I am going to submit as my gift for November. So here's the first one. Ooh, I'm going to hold it up and pull it back down again. And then drop this one and hold this one up. And we can see the little pockets on. So I'm literally just going to do red stitching around the edge to hold them solid. And I've just literally got to do a stitch across the top. And then Melanie's husband, bless him, is going to find some curtain poles put inside them. And then Melanie's daughter will fill them with sweeties. I do have something wonderful to share with you, though, this week. I was really honoured to be asked to test a pattern for Julia from Bobbins and Buttons. Now, I've tested for her before and I, test, I made the most gorgeous little hoodie. Um, actually, which I need to dig out and wear to work more because I think it would go with one of my leggings for school. But she's brought out the most delightful sports top. And here it is. Now, some of you may recognise this is my ultra favourite um, Wattle and Slate Athleisure Lycra type wear. It's absolutely gorgeous fabric. But look at this. Is that top not just so beautiful? And has more to it than that. So there's the back and there's the front. It's just a lovely, simple top. And I wear it for yoga. So here's a picture of me wearing it. Now this was taken for the pattern testing. I'm not going to pop it on now. And I, but I will put the link to the pattern in the description box below. You've got to admit, that is some cracking top. But rather than just making the top, I decided I needed to road test it. So I made it then more to yoga that night. It is so quick to wear. And now I have finished my, um, with, I've finished the edges and then I've gone over with my cover stitch machine. I do like the um, effect that you can get from your cover stitch. Look at this. I find the finish really very professional. And the absolutely adorable thing about this particular pattern, and I'm going to hold it up. And this is what made it super, super, super delightful to make this pattern. This pattern is called the Karen Top. And it's named after our lovely Karen from So Little Time. So isn't that just adorable? I understand that Karen has worked with Julia a lot and attended, they've attended lots of socials together. And I think it's just the most wonderful thing to have a pattern named after you. 
Well, hello there, happy Monday. I have come midway between my vlog. I shall find somewhere to put myself in. But as you'll see, I've just finished talking about the gorgeous new Karen top from Bobbins and Buttons, all the links below. And I was mid-editing the vlog and Laurie Ann called last night and I didn't get any more editing done. And I woke up this morning to a lovely message from Peggy over at Soho 7 saying, the pattern's being released today. So I thought, right, let's pause the video and show you these beautiful new boots. But before I go any further, I'm going to show you what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a top, my last uh, top test from Bobbins and Buttons. What do you think of this one? It's, it's a lovely hoodie and I've made it in some fabric I've got as a kit or a coordinated bundle, bundle from First of Fabrics. I can't remember the name of this particular jumper, but when I remember it, I will write it down below and put the link in the description box. So the new pattern from So House 7, I hope you've all seen it over on Instagram. It is the Moon Booties a pattern. So the boots themselves have got, let me just pull that out, you've got a lovely firm base. Now in the base, I've used a hard roll foam. You could use a soft upholstery foam. You could make this part, which is the base of your booty, with a uh, any kind of hard wearing fabric. You could use this lovely, this is baby sole fabric. Oh, I wonder why I've got something like that in the house. This is what you can put on the bottom of booties to give a grip. You could use this on the bottom of it. You could just use anything. It is a slip of fabric. This is a waterproof Cordura fabric. Um, I'll spell it just here, Cordura fabric. If I've spelt it or said it incorrectly, my apologies. I bought exactly what Peggy put in the pattern recommendations. So I thought I'm gonna give it a go. So there's the Cordura fabric there, and then at the bottom, it's got the foam. Now above the foam, I actually put a layer of wadding so that the foot sat on wadding rather than straight on the foam. Because I thought the foam was a bit hard and it's to give it some kind of cushioning between you and the floor. The whole of the inside of the boot is lined with a wadding. And then inside the boot, you use a contrasting fabric to line it with. Now I have lined these with a plushie. Can you see it? It's that bobbly plushy stuff. Now I bought that when I went to the knitting and stitching show last year with Rachel at Bombay Stores and I was going to make a jumper with it and I've not done anything with it and I didn't know what to do and then I got this pattern. This no. boot can be made out of any fabric you want. You, whatever you choose as a scrap buster but Peggy does give a list of suitable fabric if you wish to use it in a high tech performance situation. So one of the situations that she was thinking that you could use the boot was if you were camping, hence the reason that she suggested the Cordura fabric at the bottom. And she does talk about having a, um, a waterproof, waterproof shell fabric to put over as the outside fabric and then having your plush on the inside. As for my outside fabric, now this is where I did use a bit of a stash buster because I bought this beautiful fabric when I was at Guthrie and Garney um, a few years ago on one of their sewing retreats and it is a ri rifle paper cotton canvas and I made a grain line skirt with it. I think it was the moss skirt but don't quote me. So the idea is you've got a lovely sock style boot. Peggy's thinking camping outside where if you're camping you've got your waterproof layer here and you can run around, go wherever you want, and you've got some kind of protection from the outside, but you've also got your foot being kept nice and warm. So if you come out of your uh, windsurfing on the beach, you can put a pair of these on, you can paddle around the beach, you can paddle around the campsite, you can do whatever you want. Now, I have made these boots for Hannah. So here's a picture of Hannah wearing the boots. And she's actually on the other side of the camera at the moment cooking Hello. dinner. Can you hear her? Hello. There she is, pregnant daughter. So I'm going to give these to Hannah. They are going to be part of my gift for November. They are I'm announcing it early. Because Peggy asked us to make for different sizes and I gave her a list of sizes that I could make for, apart from myself, and one of those was Hannah. 
and actually Hannah didn't model them for the final fit. I actually had to use a colleague from school. But Hannah has the same size feet and they fit her perfectly. So going back to the boot themselves, going a bit out of order here, but in between that lovely plush and this lovely cotton canvas, there's a great big layer of wadding, which gives it the warmth. And if you use something soft inside like a plushie, how did it make it feel inside, Hannah? Very lovely and soft. Lovely and soft, she says. So the other thing you can do, which Peggy hadn't thought about, was to fold the top down and have it as a small boot. And I love this finish on it, is that you put on a piece of cord elastic and a little uh, tie on it. Now this elastic you can get, it is the sort of elastic that goes inside a wind cheater jacket. Just be careful if you put your sewing machine near, needle near that because it is pretty tough stuff and it could cause so many issues. So the next, is going to leave the boot there so you can see it. Hold on a minute, I might even get the other one out. There's the other one. Because the other thing I wanted to talk to you about were the instructions. Now, if you've never made a Sew House 7 pattern, and I would like to just put it out here that Peggy has not uh, asked me to do this. I'm doing this because this is what I feel, this is what I believe about this pattern. The instructions are second to none. Preparations. If you read everything she's asked you to do here, it will help you and it makes sense. She's, she even suggests that you gather your supplies together. The instructions are very explicit as to which part of the boot you are making. Here she's telling you about your elastic. Within here she gives very clear instructions as to how much you need of each particular item to construct the boots. And in true Sew House 7 style, it follows through very clearly all the way through to the end. I made this pattern as a print at home and it didn't take that many pages to do. I don't want to labour on too much. I don't want you to think that this is, is an advertisement. If you go over to Sew House 7's website now, the description box below, you'll find a link. She has got 20% off the pattern at the moment. They are a straightforward make, but you need to have some experience. She has put it down as an intermediate pattern. It is. You are going to be tested with your sewing skills and your use of the sewing machine. If you want the challenge, go for it, take it and grasp it with both hands. I loved it. I love a challenge. I love trying to make my sewing machine achieve something else. Uh, I'm very fortunate in to have the machine I've got and it performed and took all the fabric with not one little problem. The most fun is probably sewing the sole of the shoe to the sides because you have got the, um, Peggy does suggest to put the foam in place. I didn't do that. I left the foam out and then stuck it down afterwards with the tiniest, tiniest bit of material fabric glue. And I would recommend that you did that because it makes sewing those two things together. Otherwise you are having to sew right up to the edge. I did try it. I did it for one and not the one boot and not the other boot. And I did manage it. I used my zipper foot. So to get really close to the foam and, I, and it needed to butt up as get as close as you can, your zipper foot's your best thing because that's what you do when you're sewing a zipper and you've got to get close to the teeth. So it's really, really useful foot to use for that. And you get really close to the edge of where you're sewing. So there you go. If you want a quick Christmas present, it's there in one little pattern. I've got enough of this Kajura fabric because I bought it in a roll of Amazon. I'll try and remember to put the link in the description box down below. Bought it on Amazon and you don't need very much at all to make the two boots. But in our cost of living crisis over here in the UK, if you want to keep your feet warm and wander around the kitchen and you've got hard floors in your house, this is going to do the trick, folks. It really is. So I'm going to have to make myself a pair. But sadly, I've got no more of this fabric left. So I'll say a kind mother gifting it to my daughter. Right, let's get back onto the vloggers to wherever this I was. This is what happens when you finish your vlog and your daughter wants to get her slippers back. I've got cold toes.
got hard floors, haven't they, Hannah? Yes. And we've got a dog flat. I don't know what they've done there to the floor. Look at that. Happy Hannah. Yes. Happy Hannah. There's a cute theme in my pregnancy at the moment. Cozy. Cozy. Is it? Is it cozy? Yes, cozy. Cozy, cozy, cozy. cozy. <laughs> she goes, she's cooking the dinner while I uh, finish the vlog. <laughs> now, what am I wearing? I am wearing my Frida blouse. And I am delighted with it. This little bit across here, which I think is a tiny bit tight, I may have to live with, but as I lose weight off my biceps, this is going to ease. And I know that will be the case. As from around my hips, I am carrying weight on my hips. Um, I think it's just one of those things that happens with age. I'm hoping it will move. If it doesn't, then I will have to look at what I'm going to do to alter the patterns moving forward. Moving forward, making lots of clothes now, I'm going to keep it very, very specific. I want to make a dress for Christmas. I have two choices. I either use the beautiful fabric that came from Beyond the Pink Door or I use my Christmas fabric, Godmother fabric. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to use my fabric, Godmother fabric because I'm hoping to go out for the day with Hannah after Christmas. I'm not going to say where in case it doesn't happen. And then over the Christmas period, before we go out for our day, I am going to make up a dress using the Beyond the Pink Door fabric. But making many items of clothing at the moment is definitely off the radar because I don't want to be making things and then realising they don't fit me, um, they're too big. I don't want to waste the fabric I've got. I am fortunate enough to have some beautiful fabric and I just don't want to waste it. Um, can I just say also thank you so much for all the lovely comments about the weight loss. Let's just take it day by day. There you go. Now then, the big question that Jen posed for Friday Sews this week, and I know this Friday Sews is late, but I am going to tackle the question. Bear with me for one minute. Right then, Jen's question this week is, it's Black Friday. What have you bought new for your sewing room? And I think what Jen means is, what have we all bought new sewing equipment wise well i haven't bought anything because i'm not a black friday person in fact i'm a bit of an anti black friday thing and black friday is a big american thing obviously this is what we're doing over in the uk and i know it's become very popular and i know a lot of people have managed to buy a lot of really good bargains in black friday i mean i needed dog food so i did order from amazon this weekend but my dog food wasn't reduced Tell you something, if they'd had dog food reduced by 30%, I would have bought two bags, not the one I needed. I have bought something new for my sewing room, and I bought it a couple of weeks ago, and I've not shown you. But it is actually, it's from Ikea, it is a metal hook to put somewhere on the walls behind me. I am not quite certain where. I'm thinking somewhere this way on, because I don't think the other way on it, anything would fit. Um, it could fit up here you see where those patterns are it could fit there or it could fit above oh uh, above the patterns here it could fit above those patterns patterns here now it is basically a rail like so and you get little hooks to go on it like this i think this cost me less than 10 pounds and the idea is that you can hang on your skizzers Scissors, sorry, scissors. Scissors. You can hang on things with hooks. So that is what I've done because I thought it would be really good with a grandchild coming along now that Nana, Grandma, Granny, or whatever it is I choose to call myself will have something up there hanging up. So that's what I've bought for my sewing room. What have you guys bought for your sewing room? It would be wonderful to hear about what you've bought for your sewing room. So I'm just going to say thank you so much to Jen setting up her hashtag Friday Sews, even though this person is putting hers out on a Sunday, Monday. Thank you for watching, for liking, for commenting, and for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love you to. There's a little button somewhere. And I will see you on Friday for Vlogmas Day 1.
see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.